bo mmale botate molokoloko wa dirutegi o tlatsana monako neng ye kopana le gopelwa go ema dames en here die akademiese prosessie sal nou in beweeg u word versoek om asseblief op te staan ladies and gentlemen the academic procession will now enter you are kindly requested to stand By the power vested in me, I hereby constitute this assembly as a legal congregation of the University of Pretoria. During this assembly, degrees and diplomas with all the associated rights and privileges will be conferred and awarded to the candidates whose names appear in the program. Please take your seats. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we request you to join us in silent prayer or meditation to give thanks for the achievements of our students. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, as Chancellor of the University of Pretoria, I extend a hearty word of welcome to you at this graduation ceremony. I wish in particular to welcome the Dean, Professor J. Pillay, the Deputy Dean, Professor E. Van Eck, the Deputy Director, Department of Enrollment and Student Administration, Mr. W. Isaacs, the chairpersons of schools, heads of departments, directors, and honorary professors, and other lecturers, lecturers and their spouses, the representative of the Student Representative Council will present the SRC Academic Honorary Colors. All persons to whom degrees will be conferred this afternoon. All spouses, parents, and other parties, as well as dignitaries who may be, we, I may not be aware, but are in the audience, you are all welcome, and it's really a pleasure to have you and have this graduation after a two-year break. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I have a small, a very short message Congratulatory message to the graduates, 
to our candidates who are graduating today. As Chancellor of the University, it's my honor and privilege to greet the Deputy Vice Chancellors, the Deans, academic and professional services staff, our soon-to-be graduates, parents, guardians, and friends. I, wel I, wel I warmly welcome you all to today's graduation ceremony, where many of us are finally able to come together again to celebrate this wonderful life-changing day. Over the past two very difficult years, you, our soon-to-be graduates, have seized the day every day. You have risen to the challenge of online learning only to get you over the finishing line. And your place here today is extremely well-deserved. While online learning was certainly the life boy for education during the pandemic, it came with many challenges and hardships, including academic, social, and economic ones. You are all well aware of what you have faced to get here. As with all difficulties, getting to grips with online learning and digitalization has been an invaluable part of your journey and UP's journey. It will forever be part of our educational landscape and of the work landscape you will inhabit. The beauty of digitalization and the 4IR is that it has given us all far greater access to the world, which was previously restricted to physical engagement. Of course, the online world does not replace face-to-face -face interaction, as the excitement of all being able to gather here today attests. And we look forward to having the choice both of digital and physical reality. It is not easy, it is not an easy world that you enter. It was not an easy world I entered as a graduate either. In every era, we face huge challenges and crises. What the pandemic has done in this era, as we have said many times, is to highlight that it is not only a disease crisis, it is a crisis of society, of the economy, of sustainability and well-being, and of governance in our country, continent and globally. It is a big wake-up call to think and do differently, with university graduates playing an essential role in co-creating the future we want. As you head into the future, be it new careers or pursuing postgraduate studies, each of you have the education and power to contribute to substantially changing our society and communities for the better. As defined in the United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals and the African Union's Agenda 2063. Among the goals is a call for action to address poverty, inequality, the educational crisis, and to stop the destruction of the natural environment on which we completely depend for life on this planet. Quality higher education and knowledge creation are fundamental building blocks in achieving this and to contributing to job creation, employment, and economic growth, all of which are essential for a more stable, just, and prosperous society. At UP, we regard this as a calling because 
the success of one is the success of all, as expressed through the philosophy of Ubuntu, a philosophy which is part of our African DNA. Vice Chancellor Cooper put it this way during the African Week program. Our success, individually and collectively, depends on a world that is thriving, where human dignity and justice are paramount, where all people are able to reach their full potential, and where development does not happen at the expense of our planet. We recognize the critical role that our university and our graduates must play in securing the future of our country and continent. All 10 of the countries in the world with the youngest population are in Africa, with approximately 65% of the continent's citizens below the age of 35. Our continent has the benefit of a, of a young people's energy and ability to work, provided that opportunities of education and economic inclusion exist. Your education at UP is a springboard to the world of opportunities. There is nothing that you cannot do. UP holds pride of place as one of the top universities in the world, currently rated among the top 1% globally in 13 of the 22 essential science indicator, indicator fields. All our disciplines are right up there with the best, and UP has a fine and growing reputation as an, as an inspiring place where scientists, scholars, and students from different disciplines, di disciplinary backgrounds, and different parts of the world meet and interact with each other and with industry, business, governments, and non-governmental organizations. In UP's reimagining strategy for the years ahead, we'll continue to build on this and to find ways for far more young people to have access to quality education. To achieve this, we have to address the digital divide in our country and continent, as connectivity and, and data affordability are pressing issues. Access is an essential requirement for education and employment today. We need to focus on ensuring access to, for the majority of people and upskilling as many as possible to be digitally skilled and tech savvy. As mentioned before, we live and operate in a globally connected world. We need to think globally while impacting society positively wherever we find ourselves. UP alumni that you will be joining live in every part of South Africa and the world. The way that you conduct yourselves and in your professional and personal lives will be a reflection of UP and what you have learned here academically in terms of being human, conscious, caring, and caring men and women. As alumni, you are encouraged and invited to continue a close relationship with the university and to share your experience, knowledge, skills, and networks in guiding our university and growing our international reputation and partnership. It is with great joy that I welcome the new graduates today, and it's your day. Please join me in congratulating them with a round of applause. I now request the Dean to introduce to me the candidates present whose names appear in the program. Mr. Chancellor, the supervisors or the duly appointed representatives will now introduce the doctoral candidates.
Mr. Chancellor. <coughs> I introduce to you Victor Chakanya, who has completed with the requirements for the degree Doctor of Philosophy with a thesis titled Socio-Cultural and Religious Causes of Rape in Zimbabwe, a case study for Epworth community. In this thesis, Social, Cultural and Religious Causes of Rape in Zimbabwe, a case study of Epworth community, the candidate examined the extent to which socio-cultural uh, and religious beliefs and practices promote rape in the community. This was achieved by analyzing how this community's residents construe rape, the social, cultural, and religious perspectives on rape, and how these perspectives perpetuate a rape culture. The findings confirmed that rape is indeed a serious social problem in this community, and that, to some extent, some social, cultural, and religious beliefs and practices are promoting its occurrences. However, it was established that some beliefs and practices are beneficial in minimizing its manifestation. If this problem is to be curbed, all stakeholders should make a concerted effort to eliminate the harmful beliefs and practices and preserve the, ben and preserve the benefit of beneficial ones. Mr. Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy on Victor Chakanya with all associated rights and privileges. Congratulations. Mr. Chancellor, I introduce to you Hein Dalport, who has complied with the requirements for the degree Doctor of Philosophy with a thesis titled, A Basis Theory of a Homiletical Movement, prepared under the supervision of Professor Johan Mailan and with Dr. Andre Ungerer as co-supervisor. In this thesis, the candidate unpacked the traditional well, definition of homiletics in the Nether Dutch Reformed Church as developed by Professor Tien Dreyer in 1989. The study explored the new homiletics and the influences of contextual changes and socio-political aspects in order to develop a prophetic approach to preaching in the church. The research contributes homiletical perspectives for contextual preaching in South Africa. Mr. Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy on Hain Delport with all associated rights and privileges. Congratulations. Mr. Chancellor, I introduce to you Nathan Hahn, who has comp complied with the requirements of the degree Doctor of Philosophy with a thesis titled The Christological and Doxological Significance of the Anonymous Minor Characters in John 4, 5 and 9, prepared under my supervision. In this thesis titled The Christological and Doxological Significance of the Anonymous minor characters in John 4, 5, and 9, the candidate examined anonymous minor characters in John's Gospel using a narratological approach. The analysis of the characterization of these characters in John 4, 5, and 9 allows for an exploration of the Christological and doxological significance found in the narrator's 
characterization of these minor characters, displaying the author's logical and doxological point of view. The thesis contributes to the study of characterization in John and the theological message the narrator of the gospel wanted to impart. Mr. Chancellor, I request you, you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy on Nathan Tal Han with all associated rights and privileges. Congratulations. Mr. Chancellor, I introduce to you Selina Diane Hedley, who has completed the requirements for the degree Doctor of Philosophy with a thesis titled A Praxis Based Approach to Liberating Theological Education, a Cape Town Case Study. In this thesis, the candidate investigated how theological education formation addresses urban challenges through focus groups or to ethnographic ethnography and ethnographic interviews using the framework of the Praxis Cycle. As a methodology, the Praxis Cycle and the requisite series of action reflection movements exploring immersion, social analysis, theological reflection, and co-constructing plans for action were used as a framework to analyze lived spirituality in the city. In addition, four quintessential resources of womanist theology, namely redemptive self-love, critical engagement, radical subjectivity, and traditional communalism reflect the liberating pedagogical and epistemological features of a praxis approach, contributing to the proposal of a revitalizing method of theological education and formation, preparing practitioners for informed engagement with urban challenges. A womanist pedagogical framework encompassing embodied pathos, historical ethos, communal logos and imaginative oikos was proposed to enhance praxis-based urban theological education. Mr. Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy on Selena Diana Hadley with all associated rights and privileges. Congratulations. Mr. Chancellor, I introduce to you Sengband Kim, who has complied with the requirements for the degree Doctor of Philosophy with a thesis titled The Political Liberation and White Privilege in South Africa Post-1994, A Black Theology of Liberation Perspective. In this thesis, the candidate explored continued racism in post-apartheid South Africa from the perspective of black theology of liberation. The, the candidate explored the theological solidarity between the two theologies, namely Minjung theology and the theology of liberation. He noted that after democratization in 1994, attempts to preserve the privileges of white people continued. 
The candidate argued that this goes against the doctrine of life and liberation, which is pursued by the two theologies. This fact was confirmed by analyzing four recent known and legally convicted cases, Penny Sparrow, Vicky Momberg, the Coffin case, and the display of the apartheid flag. Mr. Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy on Sangban Kim with all associated rights and privileges. Mr. Chancellor, we have an unfortunate situation in that one of our PhD candidates who was successful uh, passed away in the interim period, and today we are pleased to have her husband with us. I will ask that you confer the degree posthumously. I now invite the supervisor to read the citation. Thank you. Mr. Chancellor, the supervisor, the Chancellor, I introduce to you the candidate as being recused, and I would read the citation of Rachel Makwara, the late. In this thesis, the response of the church to the socio-economic crisis in Zimbabwe, a pastoral challenge. The candidate investigated how socio economic problems could be dealt with pastorally. The church's mission is to help the impoverished, as seen as the church work in Zimbabwe. Gherkin's pastoral shepherding style of soul care and Pollard constructive deconstruction methodology inspired the study. The quality, qualitative methodology was used to produce data, indirect quotations and transcripts. Participants were picked from the mainstream churches, Pentecostal churches and independent apostolic churches. The study established that the church's role lies in religious elements of life and community development program. The holistic pastoral care model is a new model that emerged from the study, which was developed to cater for underprivileged women, teenage, and clergy. Mr. Chancellor, I request that you confer the degree posthumously to the husband. I hereby confer the degree, Doctor of Philosophy, on Rachel Makwara posthumously. Congratulations. And, uh, Mr. Chancellor, I introduce to you Mona Malan, who has complied with the requirements for the degree Doctor of Philosophy with the thesis titled Free Will, Moral Responsibility, and Divine Manipulation, Understanding God's Role in Prophecy, Prepared Under My Supervision. 
In this thesis, the candidate explored the notion of free will and moral responsibility in three prophetic texts, namely 1 Kings 22, Ezekiel 14, and Jeremiah 20. The thesis reviewed various contributions on the topic in philosophy and systematic theology. These contributions were then categorized according to their implications for the notion of the locus of control and the extent to which an agent can be said to be in control based on the underlying theories. After extensive analysis of the text, they were superimposed onto the model generated and compared to the contributions in the other fields of research. It was determined that the text presents an understanding of free will and moral responsibility which most closely approximates the philosophical concept of impossibilism. Mr. Chancellor, I request you to, con to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy on Muni Milan with all associated rights and privileges. Congratulations. Mr. Chancellor, I introduce to you Khengani Matebula, who has complied with the requirements for the degree Doctor of Philosophy with a thesis titled The Rise of Charismatic Pentecostalism in South Africa, a Black Theological Analysis, which was prepared under my supervision. In this thesis, the candidate argued that to understand the phenomenon of human rights abuses in church contexts, the history of African charismatic churches and African Pentecostal churches needs to be considered. To that end, the candidate probed a selected number of some early African independent churches it was suggested that some of these churches were the earliest manifestations of black theology. To enable black theology to engage with Pentecostal charismatic churches in general, but particularly with those engaged in the abuse of some of their members, the candidate proposed a methodological toolkit the toolkit contains the following, historical analysis, text and context analysis, biblical hermeneutics, leadership considerations, attitude towards racism and colonialism, gender and attitude towards women, eschatological orientation, attitude towards black people and black culture, and the propensity for tragedy and violence. Mr. Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy on Hlengani Matebula with all associated rights and privileges. Congratulations. Mr. Chancellor, I introduce to you Reverend Vincent Sefiso Noble, 
who has complied with the required of degree Doctor of Philosophy with a thesis entitled, The Effects of Toxic Religion Upon Individual, a Pastoral Challenge, prepared under my supervision. In this thesis, the candidate explore harmful religious practices, commercialization of religion, and challenges of false prophets by independent Pentecostal churches. The trichotomy methodology was applied for dealing with the challenges resulting from the experience of people affected by toxic faith. Some church leaders used the pulpit to man manipulate and deceive the congregation in order to donate their possession to the church. They practiced witchcraft as a form of displaying healing superpowers. They undergo initiation to acquire dark powers characterized by greed and lack of pastoral care. Social media, such as Facebook and mainstream media, have exposed unconventionally healing practices considered cultic, such as eating grass, drinking petrol, spraying people with insectic killers and other harmful practices. Mr. Chancellor, I request to you to confer a degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy on Vincent Cifiso Nobo with all associated rights and privileges. Congratulations. Mr. Chancellor, I introduce to you Andrew Opu Unazi, who has complied with the requirements for the degree Doctor of Philosophy with a thesis titled, The Influence of Joseph Ratzinger's Christology on the Interpretation of Resurrection Belief, prepared under my supervision. In this thesis, the candidate examined the contribution of the former Pope and systematic theologian Joseph Ratzinger for the candidate, the historicity of the resurrection of Jesus Christ is paramount to the integrity of the Christian faith. The candidate traced Ratzinger's methodology and influence on resurrection belief in the Catholic Church and indicated how Ratzinger argued that the historical critical method, unaided by faith, cannot grasp the full meaning of the resurrection. In doing this, the candidate indicated the relevance of Ratzinger's spiritual Christology, which posits the connection between the dimensions of faith and history in a relevant way for 21st century Christian faith. Mr. Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy on Andrew Okbu Onazi with all associated rights and privileges. Congratulations. Mr. Chancellor, I introduce to you Muragi Cable Bendis Sekanyani, who has complied with the requirements for the degree Doctor of Philosophy, 
with a thesis, an African understanding of baptism in the Methodist Church with special reference to the stillborn prepared under my supervision. In this thesis, the candidate investigated the baptism of stillborn babies. Pastors are increasingly confronted with grieving parents requesting a stillborn baptism. To fully address the complexity of the research question, it was necessary to analyze the cultural beliefs, customs, and traditions of African people. This included ancestral veneration, their role with the living, the similarities between cultural initiation by circumcision and Christian baptism, and the concept of Ubuntu. The candidate presents the reader with a systematic and historical comparative overview of Christian baptism, as well as pastoral and liturgical guidelines. The candidate concluded that the baptism of a stillborn baby could not be justified theologically, but in light of the trauma parents and family experience, pastors need to engage liturgically and pastorally with them. As a Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree, Doctor of Philosophy, on Moyohi Cable Benti Sekechane, with all associated rights and privileges. Congratulations. Mr. Chancellor, I introduce to you Thomas Jacobus Smith, who has complied with the requirements for the degree Doctor of Philosophy, with a thesis titled Designing and Developing a Rhythm of Life as a Pedagogy that Assists in the Cultivation of Missional Disciple Formation, prepared under my supervision and with Dr. Frederick Marais from Stellenbosch as co supervisor. In his thesis, the candidate explored missional and spiritual formation expressions of the Western Cape Dutch Reformed Church using a missional research strategy. The research investigated the pedagogy that would assist in the cultivation of missional discipleship. A theoretical framework was proposed. The candidate developed a rhythm of life that synchronizes individual and corporate practices through a missional spirituality that cultivates missional disciples. The pedagogy includes a theological foundation of Trinitarian movements, a missional holding environment, a model of life change, and eight missional rhythms. Mr. Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree of Doctor of Philosophy on Thomas Jacobus Smith with all associated rights and privileges. Congratulations. Mr. Chancellor, I introduce to you Louis Fainter, who has complied with the requirements for the degree Doctor of Philosophy with a thesis titled An Arendian Evaluation of Processes, Key Decisions and Arguments on the Rights of Gay Congregants within the Dutch Reformed Church, prepared under my supervision. 
In this thesis, the candidate explored the decisions of the Dutch Reformed Church with regard to gay congregants in the context of the work of Hannah Arendt. Key concepts that inform this thesis include Arendt's concepts of action, natality, and Dutch Reformed polity. It was found that the method of deliberation and the processes and principles of moral argumentation was decisive in the outcomes of theological discussions as much as the theological viewpoints of the participants. Based on these findings, weaknesses and strengths in both argument and approach were defined. Practical suggestions for the structure and processes of church deliberations were made, serving as a novel starting point for contentious issues regarding church discussions. Mr. Chancellor, I request you to confer the degree on the candidate. I hereby confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy on Law Offender with all associated rights and privileges. Congratulations. Mr. Chancellor, the following candidates have complied with all the requirements for the degree Master of Divinity. Rikus Blom. <clears throat> Lane Janse van Rensbeck. Enric Momberg with distinction. <clears throat> Louise Stoltz with distinction. <clears throat> Ian van Niekerk with distinction. Mr. Chancellor, the following candidates have complied with all the requirements for the degree Master of Theology, Church History and Church Polity, Almarie van Royden. <clears throat> Master of Theology in Dogmatics and Christian Ethics, Simpiwe Malashla. In dogmatics, Susie de la Schleckner. I'm not saying that correct. <laughs> Cabello Machlacane. Ukraela and Lovo. Adrian Pizza with distinction.
Master of Theology in Practical Theology, Clifford Jacob. Wako Matabate. Tari Sekote Tabo Tuala Bolanle Inang with distinction. Mr. Chancellor, the following candidates have complied with all the requirements for the degree Bachelor of Theology Honours in Dogmatics and Christian Ethics, Amber Lee Gordon with distinction. <laughs> Vincent Mandla. Gelo Mariana with distinction. <laughs> Keto Mongwe. <laughs> Charlotte Mananame with distinction. Bachelor of Theology, Honours in New Testament Studies, Graham Fryer. <laughs> Omania Fokwana. Bachelor of Theology Honours in Old Testament Studies, Ursula Hasbrook. <laughs> With distinction. Mzobantu Jibilili. Morgan Mamba with distinction. Kamagano Satono with distinction. Bachelor of Theology Honours in Practical Theology, Ponang Chopo. <laughs> Daryl Curtis. Lindilwe Kumbaka. <laughs> 
Nozuku Shoshini. Gerard Teaga. Talelo Mabitle. Mbulelo. Madiasa, Mandiasa. Frindoline Mangania with distinction. Zongazile Mani. Samakaleng Mengoa. Elusive in Schlabelli. In Schlabelli. Judith in Nisi with distinction. Kitle Modiba Tabang Matale. Charles Msipa. <clears throat> Luvani, Luvani Rambal. Morosi Shoai Setoto. Ilse Wele. Bachelor of Honors in Religion Studies. Shofelo Moketsi. <laughs> Rafalina Teko. Just a moment for the load shedding. You may proceed, but you can stand there. When the lights come on, they'll take your photo.
Bachelor of Theology Honors in Theological Studies, Tato Matsepe. Moses Motetimi. Marcelo Pina. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, the following candidates have complied with all the requirements for the degree postgraduate diploma, postgraduate graduate diploma in theology. Mayakani. Kotsetlo. Fika Mate. Dikakiso Modise. Anna Niman. <laughs> Nodatele Skozana. Babalwa Soga. <laughs> Postgraduate Diploma in Theology and Ministry. Andre Alcom with distinction. Kali Asbrook with distinction. Andre Slabert. Bachelor of Divinity, Stephanie Chambers. <laughs> Alida Duplessis. Katharina Ellis. <laughs> Renan Iloff with distinction. Carl Kropla. <laughs> Stefan Ruas with distinction. In the degree of oh, Shwanalo Suramelo.
the distinction was it was Johannes Swanapo. Anke Tausen with distinction. Cheney van der Bank with distinction. In the degree Bachelor of Theology, Vuke Shabalala. Brighton Dubé. Yeah. Into Kozisi Chela. Chela. Malita Kumalo. <laughs> Gwyneth Klein. <laughs> Palessa. Madamane <laughs> Sebasiso Mamba <laughs> Kopozo Madapemeng. The Tseko Mashaba. <laughs> Gail Imguni. <laughs> Tato Malepo. Felicity in Tetwa. <laughs> Nabule in the Wanda with distinction. <laughs> Laleto in Tlanjani. Lefu Leslie Shakane. Prudence Fasaki. The following are with the diploma in theology. Sazipo Bonga. Sasetu Dindini. Sipalele Dumakude.
with distinction. Oitemelo Malebo. Kumbelo Malogo. Christina Maluleke. Nompulamelelo Masango. Alson Moses. Alison. Edward Mostet. <laughs> Taelo Motokwane. <laughs> Karabo Impelo. Brighton Shivambu Shipalani Shivambu with distinction. Okola Shukane. Tanya Satoli. Kenosi Kadi <laughs> Filang Shotetsi <laughs> Malatse Apane. Rejoice Guta Agrinet Machau Machu Lebo Makwacha That's it. Uh, that's enough for the award.
don't want to read that. Yeah, I now request the Dean to introduce to me the candidate for the presentation of the award of the Vice Chancellor and Principal. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to introduce you, Mr. Venan Ilof, for the presentation of the award of the Vice Chancellor and Principal. Venan Ilof complied with all the requirements for the Bachelor of Divinity degree on the 1st of January 2022 and the degree was conferred on, him, conferred on him today with distinction. He distinguished himself during 2021 as the overall top achiever in the Faculty of Theology and Religion. Mr. Chancellor, I request you to present the candidate with the award of the Vice Chancellor and Principal. Uh, I hereby uh, present Venant Elof with the award of the Vice Chancellor and Principal. Well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We are now coming to the end, but before we depart, let us give our graduates a big hand of applause. I now give the time to the graduates to applaud their parents, friends, and relatives. Well, we have come to the end. You are now requested to stand for the singing of the national anthem and to remain standing until the assembly has been dissolved and the academic procession has left the auditorium. We'll now sing the national anthem.
I hereby, conf I hereby dissolve this assembly of the University of Pretoria. Thank you.